I've Got Rhythm is a very influential standard, with many other jazz standards taking the changes, the harmonic framework and structure for inspiration. It's therefore a really important one for you to know and understand. With so many chords, it can be a bit of an intimidating song to learn at first, but I'll show you through the basic changes and typical variations you're, you're likely to encounter when you play with other people. If you're new here, my name's Andy and I do jazz guitar lessons every Wednesday and Saturday. Now, check the description because I've got a link to all of the resources as PDFs on my website, including the chord shapes if you need them. So let's take a look at that form. So it's another standard with the classic AABA form, and we've got each section being eight bars, so two lots of eight for the A sections, and then an eight bar B section followed by an eight bar A section. Now, little disclaimer here. This caught me out once at a gig as well. Sometimes people will play this as 34 bars and put an extra two bars on the end. And that is really, you'll definitely encounter this if you play it with someone that's singing. If you play it instrumentally with others, they probably won't do the tag, but we're, we'll come back to that when we get into the chords. Now, just looking at that chart, one obvious thing is the A sections are very busy and the B section less so. And this is something I've not really talked about before in videos, but we refer to this as the harmonic rhythm. And that's really how frequently the chords change. And then that A section, they're changing every two beats. So it's very busy, uh, a lot of interest, a lot of movement. When we do go to the B, we get a slight shift in that harmonic rhythm and you know each chord is getting two bars, so you get a different feel in that section. Just something to think about when you're learning standards and, and listening to jazz as well. And I think that change in the harmonic rhythm to the B section where you get a lot longer on the chords just makes that section different and creates a nice sort of relief from the intensity of the A section. So let me play both A sections for you. I've written it with first and second time ending. So you, know, you play the first line and then you play the first time through, you play the bar with one written above it. Then you go back to the beginning. And then when you play the second line, you skip out that bar with the one and the bracket above it and, and play the what's called the second time bar where it just says B flat six. So let's go through that slowly. Now this song's normally played up, sort of 240, maybe 280, maybe quicker sometimes. We're going to keep things slow today so you can keep up with changes. So here we go, A section twice, one, two, three, four, B flat, G minor, C minor, F, then we go D minor, G7, C minor, F7, and the build up, give us that E flat, the E diminished, then the, back to the first time bar, then to the beginning. So that's your, your A, A. The B section is very different, less busy. Said so the harmonic rhythm is stretched out. We get two bars on each chord. So it goes like this, D7, G7, two bars, C7, two bars, F7, two bars, which takes us back to the A section. You then reach another A section, and let me play that at tempo. One, two, oh, one, two, three, four. Now, I've Got Rhythm is obviously a jazz standard in its own right, but it goes far beyond that. It's it's almost as influential as something like the blues form, you know, the 12 bar blues, in that jazz musicians will refer to the chord changes of other songs as, oh, it's a rhythm changes. So songs like Anthropology, Salt Peanuts, or even the Flintstones theme uses, you know, rhythm changes as their basis. And it became a progression, a framework that other musicians put their own melodies to. And, in, you know, you could say it's a bit lazy, but it was such a strong chord sequence that you know, people fell in love with it. It became very important in the 1940s, and many, many great songs were written with these changes. So it's a standard, but it's also referred to as rhythm changes. If someone says, oh yeah, it's like a rhythm changes, then you know, you've got to look out for changes like this in A sections and B sections. Now let's get into that harmony. Now you might recognize some moves in there, like the D minor seven to the G seven, hopefully you recognize that from the, the two, five, one in C and so forth, but let's dissect it. And to be able to do this, we need to just be able to place ourselves in the key. What key are we in? We're in the key of B flat, which is very common for, for this standard. It's the standard key for it. What does B flat major mean? Well, B flat major means the following chords are in key that you can build with the B flat major scale. So you can have you know B flat major seven or even B flat six, just a, or even a plain B flat chord. C minor seven chord two, D minor seven chord three, E flat major seven chord four, 
F7 chord 5, the dominant chord, G minor 7 chord 6, the relative minor, A minor 7 flat 5 chord 7, back to B flat. So we've got a, a few of those chords in the A section and one of them in the B section. On Now on the chart here I've labelled the chords which are in key blue and the out of key chords red. So we start out on chord 1, B flat 6. We move to G minor 7 which is chord 6. And then we get chord 2, C minor 7 to chord 5, F7. Now this works really well in a loop. And then it's the 1, 6, 2, 5, which is a very common progression uh, used heavily in, in many standards. Next we go to D minor 7 to G7. Now hopefully you recognise that as the 2 and the 5 of a 2, 5, 1 in the key of C. And the fact it's, it's the same thing as the C minor 7, F7, moved up a tone. So... He goes C minor 7, F7, go up a tone or two frets, D minor 7, G7. So it's like a shift up a key for a bar, up a tone, which would be the key of C, and then we go back down to the key of B flat. So you can think of this as in B flat, then D minor 7, G7 is from C, because that's the 2 and the 5 of that key, then we're back to B flat with C minor 7, F7. So it's 1, 6, 2, 5, 2, 5 from the key of C, and then back to a 2, 5 in the key of B flat. And if you listen to it, when it goes up to the D minor 7, you hear it go up and then you hear it fall back down. Listen. So here, up, back down. And we hit the second line and we've got a few more things going on here, a lot more movement and we're building to something. So in bar 5, the second line on the chart, we start out on a B flat 6 and we take a very common device in the blues and make it a dominant chord. So we make you know, we call it 1-7, so it becomes a 7th. Now, I just so happen to have written it with a D in the bass, which is the 3rd of B-flat, so you get B-flat 6, and you go to a B-flat 7 chord, but with the 3rd in the bass, which gives us a bass line going... which is very commonly, commonly played, whereas if I just did B-flat 7 in root position, it still sounds like, you know, you get the change, but you don't get the same momentum that the B flat slash uh, 7 slash D gives you because it's like whoa we're going up here there you go and the, the little number after it the little number you can see after it is referring to the inversion the fact the thirds in the bass then we hit E flat 7 which is technically out of key because if you remember a minute ago we said E flat major or E flat major 7 or even E flat major 6 would be chord 4 um, so this is really a thing borrowed from the blues you know having dominant chords as chord 1 and chord 4. So you've got 1, 1 dominant 7th with 3rd in the bass, which leads us perfectly into E flat 7 chord 4, but as a dominant. Then this sharp fall diminish is taking us, we need to get to an F note, you know, the next chord needs to have F in the bass. In the bass we want this, B flat, D, E flat, E, F. That, that's the rise I was on about, that's the we're getting somewhere moment. Where do we land? We land on a, a B flat major chord but with an F in the bass, a B flat slash F, so that's with the fifth in the bass. Then we get F7 which is chord five, back to B flat chord one, F7 chord five. So that's one, one but as a dominant with a third in the bass, chord four as a dominant, that bluesy sound, the passing diminished, Chord one with the fifth in the bass, so slash F. Back to F7, chord five, which takes us perfectly back to G B flat. And F7 helps us kick off the whole sequence again. Now, all of that information is really useful to understand, but you have to pair it with hearing it and really listening to how the chords are moving and how certain chords are like gateways to other chords and you know, the effect of making, say, for instance, chord one a dominant, the effect of making chord four a dominant, which creates that bluesy sound, but like like as ever, dominants need to do something and want to go somewhere. So that's, you know, I think why they're here. Now, earlier I talked about how this progression is so important. And yes, I've got rhythms as a standalone song, but the term rhythm changes refers to many many songs which utilize these chord changes. Now this B section is no different and you'll hear this B section in many other standards. Uh, here's one for example Flying Home or 7 Come 11 by Charlie Christian use this B section chord changes and you'll hear it referred to as rhythm changes B and it is 
as if I put it on the screen now, just dominant seventh chords moving in fourths. So if we looked at the circle, a fourth circle of fifths, remember if you go um, counterclockwise, it's a movement of a fourth. Uh, so we're going D7, if I circle D on there, and then we move counterclockwise, we get to G. Counterclockwise again, we get to C. Counterclockwise again, we get to F. So we refer to it as chords cycling in fourths. So we start out on this B section on a D7. So we start out on a, a five chord essentially. We do get a D in the key of, of B flat major as we saw earlier, we get a D minor seven. So, um, but I wouldn't really call this a, a substitute of the three. It's it's doing something in its own right. It's, it wants to go to G7, you know, D7 always wants to go to a G chord of some sort. And then we, we land on that G chord. G7 is the five chord in the key of C. So it wants to go to a C chord, but we go to a C7. C7 is the 5 chord in the key of F, we go to an F7. Now F7 is a 5 chord in the key of B flat, which takes us back home to B flat for the next A section. So if you listen to it, each chord has that momentum to get to the next one. So D7, desperate to get to G7. C7, desperate to get to F. Which wants to get back to B flat which resolves that whole sequence. So the D7, the G7, the C7 out of key. F7 is the dominant chord of our parent key, B flat. So, you know, they're all secondary dominants apart from that F7. Now let's get into some of those variations because I can guarantee if you play this with another musician, they will probably have their own take on the chords. It's not to say that one's right, one's wrong. It's more that there are different ways you can approach it. And if you're playing with other people, you just have to agree on what you're doing. So bars one to four, the first variation I want to show you is instead of having B flat six, we could use B flat major seven, a very typical way to voice the one chord. And then instead of G minor seven, so chord six, have G dominant seventh, why? Because it's a dominant of C, you know, G sevens want to go to a C of some sort, whether it be major, dominant or minor, whatever, takes us to the two chord of B flat, F seven, and the rest stays the same, D minor seven, G seven, C minor seven, F seven. And that's very important for when you're soloing because it brings in the note B on the G7 which you'd want to, to highlight. Now my second variation to bars 1 to 4 is to actually repeat the first two bars twice. Instead of having the D minor going up and coming back down, we're going to go B flat major, G7, C minor 7, F7 and we do it all again. And the head will fit both ways, whether you've got the, the D minor or, or not happening. So that's typical too. Moving on to bars five and eight, I think this is where the most variation is likely to occur. And you might have, you know, when you first play this with someone, you'll be listening to see what the bass player, pianist, other guitar player are doing here. So I've got written this time, so we've got B flat major, B flat seven. Now earlier on I showed you the B flat slash D just for their doom, 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 which I think is you know a real nice characteristic of this song, but you could equally have just straight to the B flat seven and then instead of having E flat dominant we could have E flat major seven. Now what does the four chord often like to do? You may have heard of me or other people talking about things like the minor four where we make the fourth chord in the key of a major key minor. And we're gonna do that here. We go to E flat minor six. You could, if you can't play that E flat minor six, you should play E flat minor, it's fine. So B flat major seven, B flat seven to the dominant. Chord four, E flat major seven to E flat minor six. And then what we're gonna do now, we're gonna borrow the bit from the A section, D descending to five, D minor seven to G seven. C minor seven to F seven. So it gives us. Which I think sounds nice. I really like that minor four. And this next variation for bars five to eight, we start out on F minor seven to B flat seven. Now to understand where that's going, we need to play the next chord. E flat major seven. Hopefully you can hear or you know that that's a two five one in the key of E flat major. So it's like a temporary key shift here if you like. So E moving to E flat um, major. F minor seven, two, five, one. And then what does this do? Instead of going to E flat minor, we're gonna to go to A flat seven, which is, gives the effect of a bluesy feel because if you had a blues in E flat, it would go E flat to A flat. A flat seven is also the backdoor dominant of um, the parent key of uh, B flat major as well. So this is giving us. And then we move back. 
back to our two five ones, which would take us back to the beginning. They're just typical variations of the A section I think you should be aware of. And I think the B section, you know, you could have tritone subs and all sorts of things like that on it, but I think the most obvious variation is to have the two of each five chord. Remember they're cycling dominant chords and what likes to go with a five chord is two chords. So we could have instead of D7, G7, C7, F7, we could have the two chord with each of them. So A minor seven is the two chord of D7. D minor seven is the two chord of G7. G minor seven is the two chord of C7. And then C minor seven is the two chord of F7. Giving us. At the start of the video I mentioned sometimes people play this as a 34 bar standard rather than 32 and it's kind of like what we call a tag on the end, an extra two bars. Uh, so the last A section is slightly different. I've not written this on the chart but I think this is how I've encountered it before. So you'd, you'd have the first line of the A section as normal, however you want to voice those chords. In the second line, you keep the B flat to the B flat seven to the E flat to the E diminished or, or, or variations upon, and then hit B flat, A flat seven, G seven, C minor, G seven, B flat. So that's it. I said the lyrics at that point are um, ask for anything more I uh, think you listen to some vocal versions and, and you can kind of spot that and hear that so don't forget to grab those PDFs link in the description if you'd like to say thank you for today's lesson then I've got a link to my buy me a coffee in the description and also when you download the PDFs there's the option to leave a donation there also if you want to check out some other videos for myself related to today's lesson then I'll put up my version of the man I love which is another classic by the Gershwins and then also uh, flying home which is a great little fun standard to play that uses the rhythm changes B section anyway until next time you guys take care see you soon